This video is to instruct end users and operators on the proper procedure for setting base clearance on both the Super T and the classic T10 pumps. Once you hydraulically isolate and electrically isolate the pump, you can then begin the procedure. As you'll see in this video, it doesn't take a lot of tools to actually set face clearance in any of the pumps, including the T10. First of all, you must have a feeler gauge or use the existing shims inside the pump. Second of all, you should have three additional half inch by approximately inch and a half to two inch long bolts for jacking the rotating assembly out of the volute casing. A ratchet and socket, three quarter inch socket, and sometimes you may need two pry bars to actually pry the rotating assembly out of the volute. Now let's get started. First of all, you have to loosen the half inch bolts on the rotating assembly on the outside of the retaining ring. Once you have the six half inch bolts loosened on the ring, do not take them out, simply leave them loose and then use your three half inch bolts and insert them in the jacking bolt holes around the ring. With the six mounting bolts loosened in the ring, you can then begin tightening the jacking screws which pushes the rotating assembly out away from the casing. Once each mounting bolt is loosened and each jacking bolt is inserted, pulling the drive ring mounted to the rotating assembly off of the volute, you can then one at a time and save each shim set on each bolt as each bolt is removed. After removing the mounting hardware from the drive ring, remove each one of the three jacking bolts and insert that into the mounting hole in the drive ring adjacent to where the mounting hardware was removed. Once you've inserted each of the jacking bolts equally spaced in the drive ring, begin tightening each one of the jacking bolts while you rotate the shaft. At the same time that you tighten the jacking bolts, you await the impeller to touch the wear plate. Once the impeller touches the wear plate, the clearance between the impeller and the wear plate is zero. Once you've tightened the mounting hardware to achieve zero clearance between the impeller and wear plate, Measure the gap between the volute and the mounting ring and add the required face clearance and shims to that gap to achieve the proper face clearance of 20 to 25 thousandths for the T10. Once you've determined the amount of shims required to shim the pump, remove the jacking bolts from the mounting hole position, returning them back to the jacking hole in the mounting ring. Once we've inserted the jacking bolt into the mounting ring, we can begin tightening the jacking bolt, pulling the rotating assembly away from the volute. Once you've determined the amount of shims required to fill the space, plus the distance between the impeller and the wear ring, insert them between the mounting ring and the volute, tightening the mounting bolt. Each of the mounting locations will have the same thickness of shims at each mounting location. After installing each of the mounting hardware and as a safety precaution, rotate the shim set inward. Once you tighten each of the mounting locations, rotate the impeller shaft to ensure that the impeller is not contacting the wear plate. Thanks for watching. This concludes the video on setting the face clearance for both the Classic and the Super T10 trash pump.
For more information on pump hydraulics, equipment, or application engineering, watch Gorman Rupp's YouTube channel and visit us at grpumps.com.